Maayong ahapon sa atong tanan. Good afternoon everyone. I am Dr. Samantha Tinse, Municipal Health Officer of Bantayan, Cebu, Philippines. And we are bringing artificial intelligence to Bantayanons, reaching the unreachable. Bantayan Island is an archipelago located on the northernmost tip of Cebu province in the Visayan region of the Philippines. And I decided to come back to my island home so that I could serve the people of Bantayan, the Bantayanons. Imagine this, you wake up at 12 midnight to go on a boat with 30 other people at one in the morning. Why do you do this, you ask? You do this because you want to serve your people. And this is what we do when we look for the high tide. Unfortunately, the high tide comes and goes. And we go with the high tide depending on the time that it shows up. Because if it's really low tide, we can't cross and reach the other islets. So in this case finding mission, we were going to the islet of Hilutongan, an hour away from the mainland of Bantayan. And this is us arriving at around 2.30 in the morning. And we decided to catch some fish in between for our breakfast. Our first INTP um, active case finding in Bantayan Island happened in September 2022 with the aid of USAID and FHI 360. And because of this case finding, we were able to use um, the new tools or the Introducing New Tools project by INTP, which was three specific tools. So we had the Fujifilm X-Air Ultra Portable X-Ray, the CAD 4TB Artificial Intelligence System by Delft Imaging, and the Mobile TrueNAT machine for mobile RT-PCR testing. So for presumptive tuberculosis cases in Bantayan, just a little bit of background, we have around a population of 87,000 people. And this was as of the last census in 2020. And unfortunately, 39% of Bantayanons live below the poverty line. And that's around 34,000 of our um, people. And below the poverty line means that they make less than 10,957 pesos a day or a month, which is about $200 a month. And they make around less than 365 pesos a day or less than $7 a day is the average income. So anyway, going back to our presumptive tuberculosis cases, in 2021, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, we were only able to find 180 presumptive TB cases. And this was because people were hesitant to seek public health services due to the ebb and flow of the quarantine period. Unfortunately, the Philippines had the longest, some of the longest quarantine periods in the world. We were under quarantine and lockdown for two, almost two and a half years. So anyway, going back in 2022, we were able to jumpstart our case finding for tuberculosis because we were um, piloted as one of the test sites of the INTP project in the Philippines. And using the ultra portable X-ray and the CAD 4TB, we were able to screen 1,774 more um, presumptive TB cases than we did back in 2021. This was an over a thousand percent increase. And in 2023, 2023, we were able to get back the ultra portable X-ray. And we were able to screen 1,001 cases from November 30 to December 27, 2023. So as you see, we only had one month of INTP in 2023, but that made such a difference because we were only able to um, check 1,026 cases for the whole year using a traditional x-ray in 2023. But for mon one month alone, we were able to screen 1,001 cases in 2023. So for 2024, you can see we've already screened 1,976 presumptive TB cases up to February 29, 2024. 
And actually, now our numbers have jumped to almost 3,000. Um, and it is now March 18. So this is our screening algorithm that we use here in Bantayan. So we use both the ultra-portable x-ray and the CAD4 TBAI. So if we have someone that comes in with a normal um, CAD4 TB, which is usually a score less than 50, which is the manufacturer threshold, then we still do a medical review and we correlate the signs and symptoms because we have seen cases of your subclinical TB where the patient doesn't have um, any symptoms and sometimes even a clear x-ray. And so for the abnormal CAD for TB, as you can see the picture on the right, usually an abnormal CAD would be um, a score greater than 50 plus or minus your signs or symptoms. Because usually we've seen cases where their x-ray was um, really bad, but the patient had no cough, no fever. So again, this is a type of subclinical tuberculosis. So what we do is we do a medical review of their CAD results, and then we correlate their signs and symptoms. And then following that, we collect a sputum sample, and we run it through either the true NAT when we're out in the field, or our expert MTB R R R I F when we're out, up in the clinic. So um, we have three, case, three types of um, case detection. So if the person has MTB not detected in their sputum, we still refer them for TPT if we find that they had um, uh, high-risk TB or previous exposure, or if they have other pulmonary conditions, then we refer them to a pulmonologist. And if they have um, MTB detected, but RIF resistance not detected, and we start the DSTB treatment on the spot on the same day that they get treated. So we're, when we're out in the field, we have uh, medications readily available with us, and we start the treatment and contact tracing right then and there. And then, unfortunately, if we find that the patient has RIF resistance or drug-resistant TB, we do second-line testing. And then that's when we recommend them for the DRTB regimen of your SSOR or your other um, DRTB regimens based on the analysis of their second line testing. And obviously we do contact tracing. And we're, when we're out on the field or out in our clinic, we not only focus on TB, but we kill two birds with one stone. And we also do testing, provider initiated counseling, for HIV testing as well on the spot. Because what we found is that most people with tuberculosis may have some other underlying conditions such as your HIV. Unfortunately, last year, all our um, HIV cases also had a co-infection of tuberculosis. And then unfortunately for us, um, only two, um, two out of seven um, were deceased because of the sequelae from TB plus HIV. So there is a need for increased case detection. So now that we talked about our presumptive TB, now let's take a look at our case detection rate. So in 2021, as you can see, we had a case detection rate of only 90% because we were only able to screen 180 presumptive. And out of that, 110 had um, confirmed TB as their case finding. And as you see, in 2021, the case finding jumped up by almost by more than 300% to 458 cases with a 96% case detection rate. In 2023, because we only had the ultra portable and the CAD for just one month, our case detection rate went down to 89%. Whereas in 2022, we had the CAD, ultra portable, and the true NAT for Three, almost three months, so our case detection rate was higher at 96%. But we are still detecting really good cases with this. So in 2024, this is only up to February 29, we have detected 111 cases of TB, and that is going up to 29% just for um, January and February alone. I haven't calculated the cases for March yet. So as you can see, we bring health services to geographically isolated populations. 
here in Bantayan because Bantayan Island is not only um, one island, we are a cluster, an archipelago of smaller islets as well. And if you see the lady that's next to me on the left, that is Ma'am Lalaine. And I really dedicate this um, presentation to her because unfortunately she passed away from cancer um, during the course of our case finding. But she was the one who was instrumental in getting this project on board because she was going out in the field with us as a medical technologist every day, testing patients for tuberculosis and HIV. And I dedicate this because this project is not possible without the people behind it. So thank you, Ma'am Lalaine, for your service. And may you, we're always thinking about you. So anyway, going back to our cases. So as you see in these photos right here, we're running around with um, an $80,000 um, ultra portable x-ray and the CAD in this suitcase. Why are we walking almost two kilometers around an island? It's because um, we lost track of time and we started um, case finding and case finding and then we realized that it was already low tide. And when it's very low tide, the boat cannot go across to the mainland. And we also aren't able to walk across the mainland because it would take us like five to six hours to walk. And we might step on urchins and other rocks, etc. We also don't want to drop the equipment. So that's us looking for the high tide on the other side of the island. Fortunately, the machines made it out safely. So these are one of the um, struggles of um, case finding. Another thing, this happened in October 2022. And unfortunately, it is a typhoon season in the Philippines. And maybe we shouldn't have gone out that day to do case finding. But we did it anyway because we're here to serve the people, rain or shine. So this is us laughing. But then an hour later, we were like soaking wet. And the mayor was frantically calling us because um, we had left at 3 p.m. And we were supposed to be back an hour later, but we came back around 7 p.m. Because um, our boat almost capsized in the middle of the ocean. But it's okay. We're alive. We made it. We're grateful. <laughs> so looking back at the data. So this is our TB case notification rate. And you can see the new tools project really amplified our case notification rate. If you can see the national baseline in the Philippines is 378.78 per 100,000. Unfortunately, in 2021, we had a very dismal case notification rate because of the COVID-19 lockdown. But fortunately, we recuperated in 2022 and we had a case notification of 517, which was over and above the baseline. And in 2023, I'm proud to say we were still able to maintain um, above the baseline, but not as high as 2022 because we only had the, um, the tools for only a month in 2023. And currently in 2024, we have the tools back. So we've had it back since November 30th, 2023. So as you can see, um, this is just from case finding in January and February alone. Our case notification is 126.15. And hopefully it will increase up and up as the year goes on. So I just wanted to highlight the vulnerable populations that we go to here in Bantayan. Um, the first group that we really, really wanted to screen when we got back the tools. So just a little bit of background if you're confused. So we had the INTP project here as a pilot in September until October 2022. And then in between that, um, we didn't have the tools anymore because they were taken to another site. So from November until, uh, so pretty much one year, November 2022 until November 2023, we didn't have any of the new tools. And fortunately, on November 30th, 2023, which is near Thanksgiving, we were able to get the tools back to the island through um, the 
through a, a lend, how do you say this? Because we borrowed it from the Department of Health, which was donated to them by FHI 360 and the Stop TB Partnership. So we were able to get the tools back to Bantayan and the first population that we screened were our PDLs, or persons deprived of liberty, or as people call them, prisoners. But we don't like to call them that. So they are the first population that we screened back on the island. And unfortunately, we had two cases of active tuberculosis, bacteriologically confirmed, and one case of HIV co-infection in that population. So as you can see, it is very uh, useful to have these types of tools because we can give uh, screening, treatment, diagnosis right on the spot for these people because unfortunately in the Philippines, PDLs need a court order before they can get any sort of medical treatment outside the facility. So by giving this to them, offering these services to them, um, we are opening up doors for better treatment. So as you see the picture on the right, that is uh, me and my nurse and our other staff I'm um, doing a home visit on a patient with pot disease or TB of the bone. Unfortunately, this patient had spinal surgery and she was bedridden and she needed someone to debride and clean up her wounds uh, post-surgery since she was due back for another OR um, next month. So we do home visits as well because not everyone has the capability to come to our clinic or even... Um, come to the health center, so we go to them. So for treatment success rate, I'm proud to say that Bantayan has a 98% treatment success rate for tuberculosis in 2023. So we were able to treat 447 cases. Why didn't we reach 100%? Because unfortunately, some of our cases passed away or some of them transferred to a different facility. Um, as you see in 2021, our treatment success was still okay, 96%, so 132 out of 180, but the cases were so uh, small or so low. And then in 2022, since we were still starting out, we had a treatment success rate of 93%. But as you see, we found, more mis we found the missing cases of TB and we continue to find them. And that's why having these tools available to us is very important. Technology is the key to ending this disease because when you find the missing cases, you increase treatment success rate and you have a healthier society. As we go on, I just wanted, this is my second to last slide. I wanted to say that finding missing cases saves lives. Why? Why are we doing this? Why are we so obsessed with TB? It's because we want to find the missing cases and we want to save lives. I just wanted to end on this note. As you see this picture, this is me with Joseph. Joseph was 24 years old um, when this picture was taken and nobody knew what sort of disease he had. Suddenly, he had back pain, and then after two months, he was unable to walk. And mind you, he was working in the city as a security guard, so you can just imagine the stress, the, the worry, the anger that he felt when he felt sick. So he went home to an islet, which is about two hours away from mainland Bantayan, and he felt like he was just going to rot away and die. Unfortunately for him, he has neighbors that are very, um, how do you say, in, in Tagalog or in Spanish, we say chismosa, where I guess they don't mind their own business. They were worried about him, so they reported his case to my nurse and then eventually to me. So we decided to do a home visit in his small bamboo home. And what we found was appalling. He had sores all over his body. He had lost maybe 60% of his body weight. He couldn't walk. He was in severe pain. And I was glad that our med tech came with us. So on the spot, we decided to do point of care testing and test him for tuberculosis and any sorts of diseases. 
when we got the results back the following day, we saw that he was positive for pulmonary tuberculosis, bacteriologically confirmed. And I also found that he had a very, very high um, bacterial load. So we transferred him to a public hospital in the city. And as you see now, this is a picture of him a year later in 2023. And as you can see, he looks normal, happy, and healthy because he was finally treated for his um, tuberculosis. So nobody knew that he had TB until we came in there, saw the missing case, saw the missing link, and did something about it. So again, when we talk about TB, we're not only talking about numbers or data or values. We're dealing with human lives here, human lives just like Joseph. So when you think about why we're doing this, think about the one person. Think about Joseph. When we find the cases like Joseph, we can help them one barangay, one town, one city at a time. And eventually one day, tuberculosis will be eradicated just like smallpox and just like polio. Because doing this work is about the people, the people that we save, the people that we help. Don't hate the disease. Oh, don't hate the person. Hate the disease. And I just wanted to end on this note. When we find the missing cases, we find the hidden smiles, the stories behind the disease. And I'm so very, very happy to report that Joseph can walk again. He can talk again. He can just be himself again. And this is why we do the work that we do. Again, thank you so much for inviting me to have this talk. You can scan this QR code right here um, to add our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Bantayan Health, to know more about the work we're doing here on Bantayan Island. And these are just some acknowledgements for the lovely people that we've worked with um, throughout the years. Thank you so much. Madamo nga salamat sa atong tanan. Thank you. And goodbye.